Okay, welcome back everyone. I know it's been a while since I put out a video. Uh, reason for that is I have been cycling the tank and cycling a tank is you know, pretty uneventful. You know, you just you, know, you put your ammonia source in there. Uh, you sit and wait. So, you know, I, you know, I did the fish to cycle, dropped some, a uh, couple you know, raw shrimp in there. You know, I saw a little bit of ammonia, a little bit of nitrite, not huge spikes, but I did see a big spike in nitrate, you know, went from 2 to 5, 10, you know, up to 25 before it dropped back down, which I thought was kind of strange. I thought the only way to get rid of nitrate in your tank is to do a water change. But what I, what I found out in doing a little bit of research, um, you know, research is everything in this hobby, and I hope I remember this correctly, you know, there's, you know, the surfaces in your aquarium, you get a, a film of bacteria and at the the lower levels of this film you, you know you get lower oxygen levels and when the oxygen is low certain bacteria and I guess this is the beneficial bacteria is able to use nitrate instead of oxygen in order to you know, oxidize carbon or whatever it is so you know the result is this nitrate is converted into you know nitrogen gas which is you know diffused out of the tank so that's the reason why you know my nitrate levels at least that's my understanding and how it was explained to me why my nitrate levels went down without the water change. So, you know, cycle is done. One thing I have not seen that everyone said that is, you know, will happen to every new tank is a diatom bloom. Um, man, guys, my tank's pretty, it's pretty clean. Uh, I was going to add the cleanup crew right after the cycle completed, but there's really nothing to clean. So, you know, I saw maybe just a little bit of algae uh, it was something looked like a little tumbleweed growing on top of my power head uh, and there's a little piece on that rock right there right in the center I know you can't see that too good but that's where it is and that's about it I've got some you know some coralline algae coming in on the on the top of those rocks purple and a really lime green looks looks pretty cool but you know that's that's about it um, I know that now that the cycle is complete and I'm not going to be adding fish for a little while because my quarantine tank is cycling then I'm going to need to feed that beneficial bacteria that I built up so I've been you know, ghost feeding the tank I start out with flake food but the flakes you know man they head straight to my overflow box and you know, down it to my sump so what I've been doing is you know putting like a, like a half a shrimp in a you know a little bag and you know dropping it in there and you know feeding that way so maybe a question I have is how often should I do that because right now I've been doing it maybe once a week uh, is that too little too much you know any comments on that would be great a another change I did make during the cycle and you probably noticed it already is to the aquascape and that was not intentional uh, one of my subscribers made a, a what I thought was a great recommendation, you know, those two rocks, he recommended that I separate those off to the side to kind of create its own little colony. So in my attempt to do that, I ended up hitting the main structure pretty hard and it came tumbling down. Uh, and I was, you know, at a loss. So the good thing is I like the aquascape, aquascape better now. So I, you know, I added, I, I redid, you know, those two structures right there. So I've got uh, a few more tunnels, caves uh, on that side. Uh, you can go up in there, and then that one, you know, that right there. It's just a little piece of live rock right there. Uh, and I have my separate um, platform for some corals over here, and you know, I've got a little overhang, and uh, you can go through the back there. So, although I had no intention of changing the aquascape. Uh, make any major changes I ended up doing it anyway <laughs> which is you know kind of by accident but anyway uh, move the bar around to better viewing this way so in the back let's take a look uh, no real changes to the sump you know, I got my skimmer in there it's a reef octopus uh, NW150 uh, I put a 90 degree elbow on the output so that the water kind of flows in instead of you know crashing down so it's it's much quiet you really really don't hear it now the one thing about that fitting is those those fittings are non-standard so in order to get that 90 degree 
elbow to fit in there. I literally took it out to my grinder and grind it, you know, one of the ends down in order to get it to you know, fit in there. I uh, didn't feel like searching around to get the part, you know, I figured I could you know, DIY it and uh, get it to fit, and it, and it does, no problem. Uh, let's see, what else? That's about it. Oh, I, some of the live rock that I had, I moved from the display tank down into the sump. I'll get some cable and put it in here. Um, probably the next couple of days. Got my heaters in that portion. Oh, and I added a light, uh, CFL bulb in there. And let's see what else. Uh, the pump's the same. Well, I think for my last video I had already changed the pump because I had a Mag 7 at first and I didn't like it. Thought it wasn't loud. Had a crackly sound to it. So I changed that out. So now that's been you know, relegated to you know, mixing duty in my, my little saltwater area. Uh, another thing I changed was that foam block used to be up top, um, moved it to the bottom, resting on top of my homemade media tray, and underneath it I put a strip of 50 micron, uh, eighth inch felt pad. At one point during my cycle I had a, just like an explosion of white dust in there, and you know, a couple people said it was an the bacteria bloom, which is, they said was a good thing, and also uh, it coincided with my the discovery of a bunch of copepods in the tank. And I still have quite a few; they're all on the glass, and there's no way you'll be able to see those. But I have quite a few of those on the glass and in in the sump. So you know, I put that felt pad in there to polish the water. And it works great, so I recommend if anybody has you know a foam block and they want to polish the water to you know add a, a um, you know, strip or you know cut it to size whatever you need to you know, it'll catch a lot of the fine fine particles that definitely a, a, the more coarse foam block will not catch. Uh, one thing I do not have that's still on the wish list is my apex along with the breakout box, the auto top off, and um, my dimmer for my LED light that I decided to get. I was going to get a T5 light to begin with, but decided, you know, instead of upgrading in a couple of months, might as well just save and get what I really want. So those are still items to be purchased, you know, holiday season, spending money you know, on everybody else. Uh, it's, it, it may be a little while before I get that, but we'll see. Uh, so in the meantime, you know, a friend of mine gave me an old T8 aquarium light that's, you know, it's, it, it lights up the tank. That's, that's fine for right now. I don't have anything in it, so, but we'll see. Uh, another change I made in this room was, I noticed it was a little stuffy in here uh, sometimes, so I started thinking about how am I going to, you know, vent this room, and I was going to you know, run a line uh, outside by a little, you know, quiet bathroom fan, and invented to the out because these are exterior walls right here but I went a cheaper quicker route because I didn't feel like cutting a hole inside the house right now uh, I bought a $10 desktop fan from Walmart and the, I mounted it to the ceiling here and the good thing about my basement is this is a doorway here it's unfinished is I have a drop ceiling so that fan sucks air and blows it over my ceiling and I removed one of the tiles and put some egg crate up here which is right over this window. So it just really vents out into you know into this area. Works great. I uh, put it on a little digital timer that has like 25 or 30 events. So right now it's coming on for 15 minutes you know every couple of hours uh, and, I'll, and I'll tweak that to whatever whatever seems right but it works great uh, I think that'll probably be my permanent solution I, I, I see no need at this point to you know cut a hole in the side of my house and run an exhaust vent you know for it when you know this really does the does the job uh, for 10 bucks so uh, let's see what else well let me take you over to show you my quarantine tank uh, real quick I'll be right back Okay, here is the quarantine tank. It's been cycling for about 10-15 days so far. 
Nothing special. Got some PVC in there. Yes, I did put a few pieces of leftover dry rock in there for decoration. Some people say you can do it. Some people say don't. You know, if I ever have to medicate the tank, I'll, I'll take it out of there. But bottom line, nothing in this tank will ever touch my display tank. So I've got a heater, a hang on the back, filter, power head, and I've still got a little piece of shrimp in there. It's looking really weird, but... Uh, so that's the quarantine tank. Nothing special, nothing special about it, but it serves its purpose. I've got it sitting in my crawl space. I have a raised crawl space, so it, you know, this area is you know, pretty big as, as crawl spaces go, but it's the perfect spot for it. So that's about it. Uh, nothing else. Oh, okay, let me show you this. Here's the reason why I have a lot of patience with this hobby. Here's my first hobby, which I, you know, I, I still love, and that's RC planes. You know, I build and fly. I don't fly nearly as much as I used to, or, man, I haven't flown in a while, to be quite honest, but I still love to build. And anybody who builds RC planes from kits or from scratch, you know, you need a lot of patience. Uh, there's my my SIG bipe. Uh, my old, when I say old, that kit right there was, was probably easily, it was, it was probably 20 years old when I bought it off the guy. And I didn't build it for another 15 years, so it's called a Pete and Paul. Really old kit. Made some modifications to it, but I love it. I uh, haven't flown those two yet. There's my OB10 Bronco. That one is a twin. Uh, there's my extra 300S, 40 size. I've got another, you know, big scale that I'm building in the back there. There's the wing. I'll get to it again one of these days. And I've got two other kits and boxes that that uh, I've yet to start on. But again, there's where my patience comes from. So uh, and it has transferred well into into this hobby. But anyway, enough of that. Anybody have any questions, comments? Please leave them, and please feel free to subscribe. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.